All right, well, welcome back to another edition of Fireside Chat with uh, Mayor Jeff Janung. I am Mayor Jeff Janung. Uh, and in the theme of fires, we are coming to you today from the, uh, the well, I don't know what, where we are. We're kind of down by the rec centers over there. We got, a, we got a new bridge happening over here. And in the background, we've got uh, a bunch of firefighters from the Cochrane Fire Department. And in fact, I'm gonna invite uh, Captain? Deputy Chief. Deputy Chief. See, I, I can never get it right. Deputy Chief Sean Pauly. Yeah, you, Mr. Mayor. Thank Welcome to the chat. Thank you very uh, much. Well, what's going on behind us? So we're uh, really excited to announce that we have this brand new rescue truck that was uh, approved and delivered this year to the town for our town of Cochrane citizens. And we're excited to get it uh, in service here this week. And we're going to be ha having a uh, inviting the public out for its push-in ceremony on October the 12th. Awesome. So stay tuned to the town of Cochrane public notice board on our website and uh, certainly we're excited to uh, unroll this truck as part of its uh, community service and uh, welcome it into our community and behind us we have uh, the firefighting team that are actually working on the training of some of the new tools and equipment that we've actually purchased for this truck so paratech rescue struts are, are uh, a new innovative process a project and uh, item that we're going to be having for uh, rescue type scenarios so very cool here behind us that's what the crew's doing they're working on uh, different scenarios We've got a couple cars rolled over, and they're going to take the day today to learn about those struts. So nice, yeah. So some cars rolled over. The guys are stabilizing them, and uh, I guess if someone's trapped underneath or um, inside a vehicle and they need to stabilize, that's what they're that's working, what working on. on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I guess uh, training's a ongoing function with the fire department? Certainly, the, the town of Cochrane, the fire service members are trained daily. They have a, different, a whole bunch of different type of uh, training scenarios that they work through on, on the job training, uh, rescue, uh, fire suppression, and even just basic ropes and knots and basic firefighter skills. And so they're uh, they're always constantly out there and out in the community. Cool. Yeah. Bob, we so picked a good day for it. You certainly did. Yeah. Thanks Thank for being much. here today. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's the exciting part. Um, now on to the agenda of last night's meeting. So we had three public hearings. Uh, public hearing on, um, let's see, bylaw 15 slash 2018 car wash regulations. So uh, planning are bringing forward a uh, amendment to the car wash, uh, to, to the land use bylaw to add different levels of car washes. We're gonna have a uh, proposed car wash, uh, minor, uh, major, and a regular car wash. So um, that will be coming forward to council, uh, I think at the next meeting, where we debate uh, second and third reading of that. Um, then we had a uh, public hearing for Rivercrest on uh, some land use uh, designation there. And that'll be coming back to the next council meeting. And we also had a brief conversation on uh, cannabis uh, with a land use bylaw amendment uh, going on with cannabis, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, then we reconvened the regular meeting of council and we moved into the agenda. So I'm just gonna go through it here. We had a couple of delegations. First delegation was from uh, the Helping Hand Society of Cochrane. Uh, of course, they do great work in our community, helping out, uh, filling gaps around the community where uh, people are in need of, uh, now you may have seen them recently at the Fall Food Drive, that's the Helping Hands. Uh, and we, so we heard from them, they're asking for a uh, operating grant from the, from the town to be uh, discussed in budget here coming up in the fall. Uh, thanks to them for all the good work they're doing around the community. Uh, then we heard from the Cochrane Tourism Association, and again, this is a theme. Uh, they're asking for operating dollars too, and they're actually asking to be included in the annual town budget for inclusion of funds so that they can operate similar to how the library does now, uh, where the town uh, provides funding on an annual basis to help operations for the library. They would like to have the same with their Cochrane tourism strategy that they're working on and uh, secure uh, kind of a development of sustainable funding. So um, that, that will be talked about later in the fall too as council moves into budget deliberations. Uh, and again, thank you to the Tourism S Association for all the hard work they're doing. Uh, and I said to them last night after their report that uh, they're doing great work. I'm hearing from people in the community about um, the, the, the 
just the, the presence of tourism has kind of been uh, amplified since the strategies come out in March and uh, it's just good to see. I see they, they're doing drone videos, they're doing uh, just uh, just bringing things around, uh, making people aware uh, of, of what Cochrane has to offer. Uh, we all know it as uh, residents, but uh, you don't always, uh, as someone from out of town, realize how much there is to see and do in Cochrane. So thanks for all the work they're doing on that. Uh, you can hear some of the noise in the background. That's just these guys training away, and we're just going to pile through while they're uh, stabilizing this, this vehicle behind me. Uh, next, uh, bylaws. So this was again the cannabis uh, discussion. So um, basically um, the planning department found a loophole in our cannabis bylaw. Uh, obviously cannabis is not legal yet. We're October 17th is when uh, that will be hitting the streets in Canada. Um, so in uh, preparation for that, uh, the land use bylaw needed an adjustment to it to uh, basically ensure that um, all permits or all all businesses that will want to be a retail outlet for cannabis will have to apply for a development permit. Um, with the way it was written before, if you were an existing business and you wanted to start selling cannabis, all you would have to do is go through the ALGC and uh, you could skip our, uh, our development permit process, which we don't want to have happen. We want to monitor this very closely, especially the first few months. So uh, council passed that last night and it was uh, uh, unanimous, of course. And then we had a brief discussion about uh, how the permits are actually going to uh, come into effect. So on October 1st, uh, the businesses that are wishing to apply for a development uh, permit in Cochrane to have a retail outlet will have to come to the planning department, um, be in line and have their application ready and uh, it will be on a first come first serve basis where we expect a bit of a lineup I guess. There's been a half a dozen or so or more uh, potential businesses that are interested in having a retail outlet in Cochrane so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out and who end, uh, ends up ultimately opening up a shop in Cochrane. Um, one of the questions asked last night, and I had written it down, but I believe it was uh, Councillor Nagel asked uh, the question, so when would we expect to see our first retail outlet in Cochrane? Uh, it would be some weeks or months even after the October 17th um, legalization period because um, that's when the first day will be they will be allowed to uh, start preparing, uh, preparing sorry, for um, their business. So uh, all the build outs and all of that construction stuff that will have to happen after a development permit is granted, uh, that process will have to take place. So it won't be like that we'll have uh, three or four retail stores in Cochrane right on October 17th. So it'll be well into November, I would guess. So that was just one question that we had. Um, then we moved into new business. We had a report from the uh, Inspector Weir from the RCMP. It was the uh, 2017 RCMP Mayor's Report. Um, and they call it the Mayor's Report uh, because they it's a part of their process through the RCMP that all um, reporting officers, so Inspector Weir in our case, uh, reports to the, uh, the Mayor of each community across Canada about the just the stats and what the RCMP have been up to over the past year. Uh, in the future this will happen in the spring uh, because the I guess we're finding that the, the information that they're reporting on, this is 2017 report that we heard last night, is going to, uh, it's kind of outdated data. So we're already in October almost here in Cochrane and hearing about last year. So um, next year we'll hear about this in the spring and it will be much more relevant. So uh, in a nutshell, and you can watch the live stream video last night on uh, our channel, uh, let's, cock, let's talk Cochrane.ca. I always have trouble with that, but uh, if you want to check out the YouTube recording of it, you can see the entire report given to council. But uh, the nutshell 
synopsis of it is that uh, Cochrane's in pretty good shape, uh, crime-wise. Uh, there's no neighborhood that they're seeing uh, as a hot spot of uh, criminal activity. Um, the inspector Weir talked about the increase of uh, RCMP that uh, council had approved in the budget last year of three. Uh, they're not all hired, and uh, well, they're almost all hired, and they will be hopefully on the streets of Cochrane by the end of this year. It takes a while for the RCMP system to uh, put members in place after a municipality um, agrees to uh, hire more. So uh, we're going to see some more uh, in the, in a, one will be a school liaison, another is crime analyst, and uh, it's just going to be good to have more uh, cops to pop uh, the, the uh, officers per population in Cochrane. So, um, oh, one thing that uh, Inspector Weir did highlight was that we're going to have, uh, what did she call it, the uh, face forward, um, hmm, drawing a blank here, face, I think it's called the face forward uh, mapping for the community. So you can be, go on the Cochrane website and find the link. A crime activity and your the, all of Cochrane will be on uh, online on a map where you can see uh, every 14 days the RCMP will update that and show what crime has occurred in Cochrane an area so if there's a break and enter or a vehicle disturbance or a, there all of those stats will be available online and you can look on the map and see what's happening in your neighborhood so the RCMP are encouraging residents to be involved and know what's going on in your community so that you can help them with the crime. So um, one thing that Inspector Weir talked a lot about last night was that they had just apprehended eight uh, suspects recently on uh, vehicle crimes for stealing cars that all of those tips came from homeowners in Cochrane and they caught all eight because of the tips from people um, just just uh, calling in and with some suspicious activities in your neighborhood. So uh, she's really encouraging you to uh, lock your vehicles, lock your doors, but also uh, don't be afraid to call the RCMP if you have uh, a sus suspicious character in your neighborhood. So that was the RCMP report. Uh, then we had uh, some development officer appointments. Um, so the development office now has uh, appointed Amanda Legros, uh, Danica Crosby and Adam Norquist as uh, development officers. So that was exciting for them. Uh, we then talked about uh, Bow Meadows floodway maintenance reclassification. This was a notice of motion brought forward to talk about uh, mowing a section of grass, uh, it's a floodway behind Bow Meadows in uh, between Bow Meadows and the river. So there was a group of residents that came forward talking and asking council to uh, rethink and revisit the idea of mowing that area. Um, since the floods in 2013, um, the administration and the parks department had changed the classification of the mowing practices there to allow that area to uh, re-establish as a old, uh, like a natural area, I guess, to, um, and the hope is that trees and longer grasses would come in and really root in the area. So in case of flooding, it is been, has been identified by Alberta Environment as a flood way, which means that's uh, where a uh, heavy flow of water could be in a flood situation. So um, anyways, the residents down there are asking council to mow that area. So we had a lengthy discussion about what are the uh, ramifications of doing that. Uh, is it, should it just be a park? Uh, will it affect um, homes? Uh, is there a risk or a liability to the community if we were to uh, mow and, and, and essentially remove a flood mitigation strategy that's been put in place by administration? So uh, we've asked for more information. We, uh, I know a lot of people will uh, be disappointed by us deferring this but to the next meeting we're going to talk about uh, uh, we're going to get a, a legal opinion on whether it's uh, there's a liability factor to the community of us mowing or not mowing so a simple thing turned into a bit of a you know we just really want to make sure we're doing the right thing 
and not risking the entire community for mowing behind uh, a few homes in Bow Meadows. Uh, ultimately, council did agree that if it's simply mowing, then we should just go ahead and mow it, but uh, we just want to make sure we're, we're doing our due diligence there. So that was that. Uh, lastly, we talked about uh, the Q2 uh, 2018 financial report. Uh, quarter two in the in the community is really uh, well the least uh, important quarter I guess because most of the business is done over Q3 and all of the revenues and expenses are generally in Q3 so there was not much to report there so uh, um, yeah that was pretty basic stuff nothing outstanding there and then we moved into some really exciting stuff and that is the uh, notices of motion and I'm super excited to say that I finally got my opportunity to have a notice of motion I had to vacate the chair to do so, so uh, Councillor McFadden is the Deputy Mayor now, so she took the chair and she uh, allowed me to put my notice of motion on the floor, which because this is such an emergent issue, I asked for two-thirds of Council uh, to support me in this and we decided last night to put this motion on the floor and where I directed, uh, I asked Council to direct administration to put in place a speed zone for Main Street Cochrane because uh, uh, obviously speed Speed zones have been a topic of conversation around the town, uh, but I uh, I really think speeding on uh, Main Street is, is a concern. So uh, two kilometers per hour is going to be the maximum speed you will be able to uh, reach on Main Street in Cochrane, and that will be going into effect on Saturday, September 29th. So, um, but only from the hours of 10 to noon. And this, I asked also for this to be strictly enforced. Uh, by photo radar and uh, there will be uh, bylaw and RCMP enforcing that uh, new speed zone on Main Street from the hours of 10 to noon uh, but there's only one stipulation this is for uh, Rocky View residents only so if you live in Cochrane uh, you don't have anything to worry about uh, speed through there at the regular speed limit but uh, Rocky View residents no two kilometers per hour from the hours of 10 to noon on Saturday September 29th and that uh, really is uh, brings me to the last bit of information I want to share with you today and that is about the outhouse races are on Saturday September 29th from the hours of 10 to noon and uh, right on Main Street in Cochrane and uh, hopefully we'll see everybody out there uh, I have challenged uh, Rocky View County and our council is is uh, rip-roaring and just uh, ready to race on Saturday against our rivals at uh, the Rocky View County. Um, they are preparing a, an outhouse of ep epic proportions I guess. They had a media release and we've been uh, catcalling back and forth and you know that we've been working on our relationship uh, back and forth since the election to uh, really become good neighbors uh, but that, the gloves are off starting on Saturday and we're gonna put our differences uh, not aside actually we're gonna we're gonna take it to the streets and we're gonna race out houses on Saturday. I'm not sure what heat we will be but uh, please make sure you come down to Main Street. There's a free breakfast from 8.30 to 9.30. Festivities start at 10. Uh, Dan Crawford's going to be calling the races and uh, there's a whole bunch of th activities happening for the whole family. Hopefully the weather's going to be like today and uh, we're just going to have a, a great time uh, handing our neighbors uh, their uh, yeah I don't know what well, you have to come and see so that's it for me coming from uh, the exciting backdrop here today of the uh, Cochrane Fire Department and all of the activities as they train away to stabilize vehicles and uh, yeah so I'm off to AUMA this afternoon to hopefully uh, get some well not hopefully I am going to uh, meet with a whole lot of uh, ministers and they'll have a whole bunch to report back as most of council uh, six out of seven of us are heading up to that convention this afternoon to uh, network with uh, regional mayors and le elected officials um, hopefully get some chance uh, chance to see the premier and 
and uh, like I said, I've got a meeting with Minister Mason, Alberta Transportation Minister, so we can uh, discuss Highway 1A and the 1A22 intersection. So that is the highlights from last night's meeting and uh, hopefully spiced it up a little bit today with uh, bringing you some of the activities of what your Cochrane Fire Department brings to work every single day. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.